Okay, so now we're going to discuss the most common types of reaction that we will see when we have compounds that are dissolved in water. The major reactions are precipitation reaction, acid-base reaction, and then oxidation reduction reaction. And within oxidation reduction, there's actually several distinct categories, combination, decomposition, single displacement, and combustion reactions. So we're going to start by talking about precipitation reaction. The reason it's called precipitation reaction is because when you mix one reactant with another reactant, you get what we call a precipitate, just means something that's kind of falling out of solution, it's a, a species that exists in the solid state. So when you mix these two things together, you can see here that this solution looks really cloudy to you, and there's some type of uh, kind of cruddy precipitate here at the bottom, and so that's what our precipitation reaction look like. Just in general, when a solution is no longer transparent to you, that means there's some solid that's blocking your view, and so that's always a sign that a precipitate has formed. A precipitation reaction is also known as a double displacement reaction. A double displacement reaction has a following pattern. AB plus CD goes to AD and CB. What AB and CD stands for are ionic compounds. Uh, A being the cation, B is the anion, C is another cation, and D is another anion. When we say it's double displacement, what we mean is we are swapping the two cations, A and C in this case, so that the products now is A combined with D and C combined with B. And that's why you have those products right there. I put question marks here because we don't really know what the state of A, D, and C, B are. The way we find out is by using our solubility rules. This is three steps that we use to make predictions about what we get on the product side as well as whether they're soluble or insoluble. Okay, let me show you how to apply this idea in an example. It says that we're going to write an equation for the precipitation reaction that occurs, if any, when solutions of sodium carbonate and copper 2 chloride are mixed. We need to first write our reactants. Sodium carbonate is Na2CO3, and this is going to be aqueous. And then copper 2 chloride is CuCl2. These are both aqueous species. Uh and then the product is going to be a swap of the two cations. So I would take copper, and now I would partner that up with carbonate. And then I would take sodium, and I would partner that up with chloride. So my product is going to be sodium chloride and copper carbonate. Now the next thing is I need to determine whether the formula I've written for the products are correct. To do that, I need to know my charges for my ions. In this case, Na is a plus one species, Cl minus is a negative one species, so that adds up to a neutral species, which means that that formula is already correct. Copper in this case is copper two, according to our question, so it's a plus two species. Carbonate is a polyatomic ion that has a charge of negative 2. So plus 2 and minus 2 neutralize each other, giving us 0. So that formula is also correct. So now that we have both the correct formulas for the products, what we need to do is fill out what the states are for each of these products. To do that, we go to our solubility rules. So here is our solubility rules shown on the left. And what we need to do is find out whether each of the following products, the ionic compounds or the salts, are soluble or insoluble. If you look at NaCl, that is a group 1A salt because it contains sodium. And as a result, all group 1A is soluble. So we would write this as AQ. Copper carbonate, we would scan through the solubility rules to see if there's anything that has either copper or carbonate. And we see that there is a carbonate rule right here, and it says all of them are insoluble, with some exceptions being group 1A or ammonium. Copper is not one of those guys, so as a result, this would be a solid. The next type of reaction we're going to talk about is acid-base reactions. So acid-base reactions are a type of double displacement reactions as well, as you'll see in a second, but involving an acid and a base. So 
Let's talk a little bit about what assets and bases are. Assets, from a practical standpoint, you can identify them by their taste, which is usually sour, and they can react with a number of metals and carbonate minerals generating some gas. And they also have certain effect on substances that we call indicators. So for example, here, this lemon has an acid on it. And if you put one of these indicators paper, you can see that that turns it into a reddish color. One of the earliest definitions of an acid is provided by Arrhenius where he said that an acid is a compound that when dissolved in water will produce hydrogen ions or H+, which we also call protons. There's two different types of acids. Strong acids means that it will dissociate completely and produce a lot of protons. And weak acids will also dissolve in water but would not produce as many protons compared to a strong acid. I've mentioned this before to you. You want to memorize all the strong acids. There's only six of them. And then all the other acids that is not one of those guys would be considered weak acids. The other way we recognize acids is their formula always starts with an H and they are in aqueous state. So there's an AQ next to them. We can find out that something is a base, they're bitter, they have a slippery feel to them. And then for um, indicators, they also change them to a specific color. So here's an indicator that becomes yellow when you expose them to a base, in this case a bar. So with the Arrhenius definition, a base is any compound that when dissolved in water will produce hydroxide ions or OH minus. So again, similarly, we have two different types of bases. Strong bases are the ones that will produce a lot of hydroxide ions. So they are soluble hydroxide salts. Weak bases, there's two different types. There are weak bases that produce hydroxide but don't produce a lot of it because they're insoluble. So those are your insoluble hydroxides. So the second type of weak base, the one that's mentioned here, is the ones that are covalent compounds, but when you're reacting them in water, they end up producing hydroxides as the reaction that's shown right here. An acid-base reaction is a reaction where you have an acid and a base as your reactant. So like in this case, a strong acid and a strong base reaction. HCl is a strong acid and AOH is a strong base. When they react, it's a double displacement reaction just the same as your precipitation reaction. So H plus is your cation and Na plus is your other cation. So if you want to predict the product, what you need to do is you need to swap those two guys so that your new product is NaCl, which is this one right here. And then because NaCl is a soluble salt, we put Aq next to it. And the other product, if you notice, is H plus with OH minus, which becomes water. And water is always liquid and we don't separate water out. When you convert this to a net ionic equation, it would look like H plus plus OH minus goes to H2O liquid. The Na plus and the Cl minus are spectator ions. If you have a weak base, the reaction looks a little different. A weak base doesn't split apart. It's just a covalent compound. So NH3 is a weak base, for example, reacting with HCl. All it's going to do is combine those two species together, making it NH4Cl. And if you write it in the net ionic form, it just looks like this. NH3 plus H plus. Why H plus? Because this HCl can split into two because it's a strong acid. And then the H plus is what's combining with the NH3 to form NH3. H4 plus. The Cl minus actually is a spectator ion, so it will cancel on both sides. If you have a weak acid reacting with a strong base, it's kind of the flip of the equation that we just wrote. Here's your weak acid, for example, which is acidic acid, reacts with sodium hydroxide. The sodium hydroxide is a strong base, so it will split into sodium ion and hydroxide ion. And by definition, a weak acid will not split a whole lot. So we're not going to separate this as ions, we're going to write it as a unit together and they're going to combine with the OH minus, the H plus will get pulled away by the OH minus to form water. And then the CHCCOO minus is the ion that's left over as a result. The sodium actually is just a uh, spectator ion in this case, okay? A subset of acid-base reactions form unstable compounds that will decompose to form smaller molecules. One of these decomposition products is usually a gas. So we call these acid-base reaction gas evolution reactions. There are only a few of these gases, so you will have to memorize them. They are listed here on this table. For example, if your acid-base reaction forms 
H2CO3, aqueous or carbonic acid. This compound is unstable and it will break apart to form CO2 gas and H2O liquid. Let me work out an example for you. Let's take a look at the mixing of aqueous nitric acid and aqueous sodium carbonate. So nitric acid is HNO3, sodium carbonate is Na2CO3. We would swap the cations, in this case Na would get paired up with NO3 and H would get paired up with CO3. So Na, NO3 plus H, CO3. Just like in the precipitation reaction, we will look at the charges to make sure that we have written the correct formula. Na has a charge of plus one. NO3 is a polyatomic ion with a charge of minus one. So those two balance each other out and that's the correct formula. Hydrogen has a charge of plus one. Carbonate is a polyatomic ion with a charge of minus two. So right now that formula doesn't balance each other. In order to make it balance, we have to put a two next to the hydrogen to have a total charge of plus two, which will balance out the negative two from the carbonate. So that's the correct formula. Once we do that, then we write the states for each of these. NaNO3 is a group one salt because it has sodium in it. And so it's going to be soluble based on the solubility rules. H2CO3 is just an acid, so it's going to be soluble. Well, as you can see that H2CO3 is one of the products that's listed, which happens to be the one we have here. So that's going to decompose or break apart into two products. One of them is going to be H2O, which it's always a liquid. And if you take out H2O from that formula, what's left is CO2, which is your gas. So that's your final set of products. There are three products in that reaction.